Hey guys, I just came across this channel called Future Proof and they have a um, video that I thought aligns with this channel. So we can look at it. You see, I, I kind of peeked into it, but I thought I'll give you my reaction to it. It's called The Cologne Industry is a Scam. So let's watch it together. I'll give you my take on it. Uh, I got it preloaded here in full screen. And let's see, let's go through this together. How we smell to others has become a huge industry and I'm here to say that things have gotten officially out of control. This is a company that proudly claims to be the most expensive fragrance in the world, which works out to about $16,000 a liter. Fragrance? Fragrance. That's what do you pretty crazy, $16,000 a liter. Uh, I actually have to look up this company, but uh, I'm sure that Jeremy had some <laughs> aspirations for that as well but um yeah sixteen thousand dollars a liter let me know if you got anybody smelled that one before what are you saying fragrance frag f <laughs> this is a grumpy cat fragrance i never heard that somebody had a problem pronouncing fragrance by the way <laughs> <laughs> Trump fragrances to make you feel like the man in charge. Yes, today we are diving into the weird and freaky world of fragrances. It is freaky. I don't know how to pronounce. You do know how to pronounce it, buddy. You're doing fine. <laughs> now, this would be the kind of video Dr. Squatch or Native Deodorant would love to sponsor. But listen, no, we're not going to do that. We're bringing this stuff to you. By the way, I uh, posted an AMA comment under the video. So if you want to ask me some questions there, go ahead. I'll link the video below. Exclusive bonus content. Consider supporting us over there. Now, listen, I was not convinced that we should make this video until Lou shared a Jeremy Fragrance video with me. Jeremy Fragrance is this larger than life cologne promoter who has millions of followers online because of his personality, I guess, or like his knowledge of fragrances. I put on the underwear again and I started crying like a bitch. And if you're. Yeah, like uh, with this guy here jeremy was, <laughs> was the intro to the fragrance industry for a lot of people so take that for what it's worth I'm wondering for a second here why anyone would be interested in or influenced by a guy who loves wearing insanely tight low-cut t-shirts and is screaming power strength you're, you're not alone, because Cody Ko is too, apparently. And so in this video, we are going to get a better understanding of why the fragrance world is a huge industry and why so many people are willing to spend as much money as they do to smell a certain way. Because it works. Fun stuff I need to acknowledge on behalf of all the frag heads out there. Cologne apparently does not just mean men's perfume. It actually has a very specific technical meaning that I'm sure is very important. And Antonio's graphic out there. Figure it out. For the sake of simplicity, we're going to move forward in this video and use the word cologne to refer to men's fragrances in general. Now, as ridiculous as the examples that I mentioned previously are, there is a reason why bottles of smells have become a multi-billion dollar industry. See, smell is one of our core senses, and it is a very powerful one. It's basically the most evocative, primal sense that we have. Scent helped our ancestors find resources, avoid toxins, and steer clear of predators. And very true. And also, in today's world of marketing, it's one of the least explored scents yet. And it's been used in religious settings across the world for a millennia. But what most of us care about is how scent functions socially. And we're not just talking about the obvious stuff, like how if you forget to take a shower for long enough, eventually nobody's going to want to hug you. It turns out the human pheromones might impact how our interpersonal <coughs> connections go. Emphasis here on might because... That's true. However, uh, the, the whole pheromone in fragrances story is a little overblown. It's, it's not... It doesn't have as much of an effect as, as a really good smelling scent that just hits somebody's um you know preferences because even though the research here is fairly inconclusive at this point there are pheromone perfumes that contain artificial versions of musk from animals like civet cats beavers pigs and musk deer well the musk you can actually smell the thing about pheromone perfumes that 
uh, often hit the high uh, the the headlines is that you can't perceive them, and there's something that you can't even uh, consciously smell. It's a subconscious um, uh, substance that will somehow attract the opposite sex. Well, that is true to a certain extent. Again, a lot of those pheromone fragrance companies or companies that put pheromones into the fragrance are actually making it out to be something bigger than it is. So Musk very, very uh, prominently has a fragrant profile in the scent. This is because in the wild, these animals use these natural pheromones to attract mates. But now we're trying to smell like a deer to get laid at a bar. It's called Sex Panther by Odeon. It's illegal in nine countries. But it's not a completely unfounded idea. Some researchers believe that we pick up all sorts of information, largely subconsciously, of course, about a person just by sniffing them. Information like True. mood, their medical status, fertility, genetic capabilities, and whatnot. And who knows what else, really? Basically, our noses are helping us find somebody to make cute babies with, with or without our permission. Hate it or love it, it is true. Uh, our fragrance, our scent, no scent, sense of scent, scent of sense of smell. I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm just getting confused here. It is very important when it comes to finding a mate or just finding somebody attractive. So that's essentially what the whole compliment game is about, right? So let's not kid ourselves. So if humans are genetically wired to smell their way into bed with one another, and we're all trying to get laid in a loneliness epidemic, you can perhaps make a guess about how marketers are going to use said information. And yes, it is just as bad as you're thinking. In fact, there's a rising trend in business centered around the idea of scent marketing, literally harnessing the power of emotions linked to a smell in order to sell a product. Yep. A really simple version of this is when you smell the smell of fresh baked bread outside of a bakery. And shops will do this in a very specific way. For That's true. I first noticed that many, many years ago in uh, Subway, actually. If you notice that Subway always has this the specific subway smell and I think they do it on purpose uh, let me know in the comments below if you remember a business very specifically by its scent another fun fact here I actually heard a while ago that in Japanese offices they used to uh, infuse the scent of money so that people would increase their productivity I don't know if that's just an urban legend or if it's actually true but I thought it would be funny to mention for example, Victoria's Secret has a smell when you walk into their shop. That smell just so happens to also be associated with their own line of perfumes. But in the case of cologne and perfume, the product is you. Now we decided to make this video about cologne because most of our audience is male, but of course it is important to note that most of what we're talking about also applies to perfume, just sort of in reverse. The marketing of fragrance is basically entirely centered around sex. It sells you the idea that while perfume is synonymous with... Yes, uh, to an extent, but there's also a lot of people who just wear fragrance because they smell good to themselves and they don't necessarily look for the compliments. Let me know in the comments below into which camp you fall into. Are you wearing your scent for somebody else? Be honest for compliments and there's nothing wrong with that at all or just because you're a fragrance connoisseur and you like to smell well for yourself. With delicate femininity, cologne is all about masculinity and how wearing it will help you be the <laughs> sexiest, manliest man alive or the most beautiful woman on the block. And basically the entire time, it's all about attracting the opposite sex, which is, you know, a, a little outdated because I guess they think that gay people don't wear cologne. All right, I'm sorry, dude, but so far this seems to be the dumbest statement of the video. Uh, I mean, you guys know what I think. Obviously, gay people wear cologne and you can wear whatever you like and you can also attract the same sex with a scent. That doesn't just doesn't make any sense. But so far, I like the video. Because as far as marketing is concerned, the cologne that you wear promises to make the woman you seek notice you for the man that you are. And this isn't even the only time that we've seen this happen. 
We actually made a whole video about deodorant and how marketers convinced an entire generation of men that they were inadequate and literally wouldn't be able to get a job without their product. That yeah, I guess, you know, but it's all up to you in the end if you end up buying it. Uh, the same thing actually happened with toothpaste, believe it or not. If you look into the history of marketing toothpaste, it's a crazy one played on basic human needs for safety and security. The problem is that we have, for the most part, had those needs met. So today's fragrance moguls are busy working a little higher up on the pyramid of needs. I think Jeremy has reached uh, beyond the pyramid, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> Their job now is to sell you self-esteem, uh, a sense of achievement, uniqueness, confidence, respect. But that's a pretty tough thing to do and a pretty tough thing to articulate in an ad. And witness is the essence <laughs> of beauty. Fragrance mark. I forgot that Zoolander actually had a lot of fragrance mentions. I have to rewatch that movie. I'll probably have a lot of chuckles. Marketers can't just go ahead and show the product being used on a TV ad and get the idea across. So more than ever, you have to sell a feeling, a, a persona, an idea. And that is why fragrance advertisements are just completely insane. But wherever I go, there you are. My luck, my fate, Chanel number five. And so these advertisements are incredibly over the top and direct in their sexual implications. Yeah, I mean, he's not wrong at all. He definitely points out the aspect of fragrance ads that are more on an emotional level. Transcendent when you spray their scent. And you can see this right into the names of the products themselves. Versace Eros, Dior Sauvage, Carolina Herrera Bad Boy. They're all about what kind of man well, that's why we originally went with Office for Men. Date. Day. Night. You get it, right? <laughs> Very simple and opposite. Manly man, womanizer that you're going to become. And they're also kind of vaguely Greek god sounding. To give you an idea of how ridiculous this can get, look at the way Burberry described their hero cologne. A new masculine spirit exploring the house codes of duality and the power of the animal kingdom. A man in search of transformation and metamorphosis as a new modern heroism. It's a little over the top. Like, what is that, dude? Like, yeah. there is no way that i agree it's a little over the top and it's confusing too yeah that's for me <laughs> and now listen that's that's crazy on its own but we you know what's funny a lot of those product descriptions and uh names and and all that type of stuff is actually what originally created the need almost for like this whole fragrance influencer um niche i guess because it's so confusing how does it actually smell like we cannot move on from this without showing you this game that they made for the hero announcement. This is like the Kirkland brand temple run that you play to get further away from your own personal insecurities. <laughs> and listen, I played it for a bit. It's bad. I would say that this game is actually one small step. Fun fact, I'm actually thinking of, oh, I used to think of releasing a Jeremy Fragrance game when we were on better terms. Uh, it was supposed to be kind of like um, Smooth Criminal on on the Michael Jackson's Smooth Criminal on the NES, but it um, would in, include spraying fragrance and creating uh, compliments or something like that. Yeah, it's like a side, side runner. Let me know if you guys want me to work on that. <laughs> Step below or not. the game that you have to play on your Google browser when you don't have internet. But what you might notice if you look into the fragrance world is that a lot of these big names are also designed to designer fashion companies, which actually makes perfect sense. Every horrible thing that you can say about designer fashion, you can say for their fragrances as well. You're paying a lot of money to feel better than average. We legit found a limited edition diamond studded men's perfume that apparently sold for $435,000. You could buy a 30 year old studio apartment in Vancouver for that much money. Thank yeah, it shows you once again, some people have that money and uh, you know, the value of money is relative. It's, it's a really strange psychological phenomenon. Absolutely. Thankfully though, what is the most you've ever paid for a fragrance? Single bottle. 
Let me know. Sort of. It seems that people are starting to catch on to the utter absurdity of some of these big... I'm sure he's going to talk about dupes and, cl and clones. There's a new whole world of yep. indie fragrances that are popping up. Today you'll well, find influencers... Not in, uh, yeah, indie, I guess, but those are specifically clones. ...is trying to convince you to not buy fragrances like Sauvage purely because they are popular. And suddenly, there's a lot of smaller brands and indie companies that promise to make you stand out from all the normies with their boutique lineups. We Let me know where you stand, cologne, uh, clone, clone, cologne, clone, or uh, the original. A hyper-individualistic society with immense pressure to stand out in some way from all the other masses of people that we're crammed together with. And it's a basic human desire. And these cologne brands are here to tell you that they're the only ones that can fulfill that need. But here's where things get truly weird. I personally always thought a fragrance is something that just meant to make you smell good or whatever. But apparently it's actually a full-on extension of your personality. We found YouTubers discussing in all seriousness how your personal fragrance should match the color of your clothing. Your yeah, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. It's a signature scent thing. Actually, I like this video that I think I've seen this uh, that he's going to put up if I'm remembering correctly. Nothing wrong with it because, yes, you smell good, but also the impression that you make on other people and also the way you stick around in their head, the scent that you have, if you have a scent that's a signature that you always wear, it definitely is another anchor to stay in their head. You know, nothing wrong with that. Your personality or your location. Are you in the gym, an office, or a club? All of these Yeah, I like this guy. Uh, I think I watched the video a while ago. You want to be sexy of this in guy the gym? Too. Mont Blanc legend spirit. The thing influencers are talking about these... By the way, only gym fragrance I can recommend... Uh, Blue Agave by Precious Liquid. <laughs> Not sponsored, but it's a good one. These days is how to achieve your own signature scent, lest you accidentally smell like somebody's ex and then they're no longer into you, which sounds silly, but I do know the smell of the first person who broke my heart. And it is a Costco branded laundry detergent and it's fucking everywhere. Now we're not gonna go into a deep dive of the anatomy of a fragrance, but it is important to know that each fragrance apparently has top notes, mid notes, and base notes. Mm -hmm. Each of these notes shows up in the fragrance in a different sort of way. Some lasting longer than others are showing up in a more pronounced way. Since the classic notes of amber and orchids are too played out, apparently, we've got fragrances with notes of chalk and plastic bag, hair... Plastic bag? That's the first time I actually heard of it, but um, I'm very interested. <laughs> Burn. Oh my god, man! I, I'm. Let me know the most weirdest, the weirdest fragrance note you've ever tried in the comments below. I'd be curious to hear. But plastic bag so far takes the takes the bag. <laughs> Pomade, iodine, and even blood. Is this real? I call dibs on ooze. Richard Arpon told me that Lady Gaga asked him to create a fragrance that smells like sperm and blood. I got money shot. Yeah. I got blood spurt. Oh, no, don't use that one. Eh, hey, go ahead. Apparently, there's even ozonic notes, like the ozone layer. I... This is baffling to me, guys. And this is where things are going increasingly. There is a whole world of interest in niche fragrances. And if that's not enough for you, you can even custom order your own scent. And for a minute, you might be thinking that, hey, we're getting away from that consumeristic mob mentality by going niche, but ultimately, it's just more of the same message. You're not complete enough on your own, but- I oh, come on, that's a BS uh, way to take it. Of course, you can be yourself and all that, but at the same time, you can say, okay, well, just be yourself. Just be a, like Jeremy, run around in Speedos and go into a McDonald's and eat there or whatever, or try to find a nice seat in a restaurant without shoes and uh, without a shirt. But you're just yourself. You don't have to adjust to any of the uh, norms of society, of course. I think as long as you don't smell bad, you take your hygiene seriously, you don't necessarily need fragrance at all, but it's a nice touch. So come on, let's stop kidding yourself. 
but our special blend will fulfill you. And here's the problem. It doesn't work. Like this whole industry from it top does. to bottom makes billions of dollars and yet has not been proven to have gotten a single person blade. Look, what? <laughs> I hate to say it, but most. I just, okay, all right. Most people cannot tell the difference between Dior, Clive Christian, or Lalabo, or whatever the hell. Yeah, they don't need to. They don't need to. <laughs> Are you kidding me, dude? Come on. I mean, I like this video so far, but this is just kind of weird. Uh, why would you need to be able to label a fragrance in order to be attracted to it? That doesn't make any sense. Well, it's called. And if somebody's going to hook up with you because of the fragrance that you were wearing, then that's not exactly a solid foundation for a relationship, is it? Sadly, though, it actually... No, it's just noticing. It gets worse. See, many of the people who do notice scents notice them in all the wrong ways. Uh -huh. Those fragrance-free zone signs are there for a reason. We found a couple of studies that seem to indicate that about 30% of Americans find fragrance on other people irritating, whether it's because of allergies, asthma, or personal preference, or many other reasons. I wonder how they come up with these studies and who they're asking. I'm sure that most people have no problem with a good scent. However, and this shows actually that most people have no problem with it. However, you know how you like to leave negative reviews more than positive reviews. So I'm sure that a lot of those people that were asked had some bad experience. Like I hate it when I'm in a car and somebody I drive with just like completely doused themselves in fragrance. It's just annoying. Uh, so obviously I wouldn't like it, but in general, why wouldn't I like somebody smelling good? But despite all of these facts, the marketing strategies today are working. Men's fragrance is like its own... Wait, I thought it's not working. You just said it's not working, buddy. What is it? Is it working or not? Subgenre on TikTok and YouTube. We've got teenagers dropping over a hundred dollars a bottle on design. Don't do that. Alone just because Jeremy Fragrance said that it was the best panty dropper for high school. Yes, which he is did. Just kind of weird. Insanely cringy. I agree. I agree. I don't. I don't think teenagers should care too much about it. To even say out loud. And beyond the product just literally not doing what it advertises, being insanely expensive for no reason, and act... There's always a reason. There's a market. It's called a free market, my friend. ...actually <laughs> irritating to the people around you in some cases. We don't actually know very much about it. The fragrance True. industry is notoriously ill-regulated with an almost complete lack of transparency. So basically, you have very little guarantee of what you're spraying on yourself whenever the word fragrance appears in the ingredients list. The possibilities include hormone disruptors, carcinogens, and of course, allergens. Stuff that not only... Absolutely true, which is also when I reviewed um disney's frozen 2 fragrance i really have an issue with kids getting into fragrance teenagers too you should wait with that stuff and be old enough and informed enough to know what you're putting on yourself it's kind of like smoking you know people like to smoke but it's not super healthy for you but then again you know maybe you want to enjoy life in a certain way so harms you but the planet around you you're not to brag but my clones have been known to stun human growth, so. And what has happened as a result? Well, you might be able to guess. There is, of course, now a whole subsection of the fragrance world under the natural label. But of course, if you've watched... Natural doesn't always mean that it's better for you, even healthy-wise. There's plenty of things in nature that can kill you. <laughs> any videos here on Future Proof, you know that the word natural doesn't necessarily mean sustainable or good. True. A lot of the time, these are made of rare ingredients that we've been over harvesting for years, which sadly just makes them more valuable as supply goes down, which makes people want to harvest them all the more without a single thought for the industry's future. Agar, sandalwood, frankincense are some of the most expensive fragrances for a reason. They're not easy to come by and over harvesting isn't going to help the situation at all. But say for some That's reason true. you've watched this whole video and you still want to smell different than the way you smell right now. Well, we have a few options for you that are um, better now I'm than curious. the ones that we've talked about already. I'm curious what he's got now. 
Is it a pitch? <laughs> you can always support sustainable and local companies. We've got a bunch of cool companies based near where we are in Canada, like Wild Coast, which use ingredients that are locally harvested right here on Vancouver Island. I'm sure you can find alternatives near you. The key things to look for are ethical sourcing, reusable packaging, and cruelty-free ingredients. At the end of the day, yeah, I mean, most people, most companies offer that now, and I think it's a good pitch. Yeah, sure, support local businesses always. I, I'm a huge supporter of that too. Hey, you want to smell good? That's fine by me. Just don't do it to feel like. Thank you're you for having your blessing. Centaur, because that's a very real advertisement that literally happened. He makes a hot <laughs> centaur, to be honest. <laughs> He's got the upper body for it, and now he's got the lower body for it. You know what I mean? <laughs> All right. Well, guys, uh, that was it. Um, that was my reaction to the video. I Overall, I enjoyed it. I thought it was interesting. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments. A couple of things I agree with, a couple of things I disagree with. I would love to keep this discussion going. And, uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. See ya. Bye-bye.